Every so often there are certain events and certain people which pull in all strands of the various elements I've talked about so far over these hours and the assassination, because that's what it was, of Diana, Princess of Wales, had all these elements of bloodlines, of royalty, of uh, secret societies, and of the symbolism of the secret societies um, in the actual assassination itself. In The Biggest Secret, I've gone into this in tremendous uh, detail in one chapter in particular, and uh, there is a, a video documentary planned of this uh, Diana assassination in the background to it. Maybe it will even have been... Uh, uh, done and be available by the time you see this. So I'm not going to go into the Diana thing in great detail here because it's done elsewhere, but I just want to go through a few things. Um, from close confidence of Diana, it's very clear that uh, she realized after a while that she had been pulled in um, for a specific purpose. She used to call herself the Windsor Brood Mare. The Spencer family is an ancient bloodline which is interbred with many of the aristocratic families of Britain, of Europe, and of uh, America. Spencer's are distant cousins, for instance, of the Rockefellers. Um, and she realized that they'd drawn her into the Windsor web because they wanted her genes. They wanted to fuse the Windsor genes with the Spencer genes to produce a, another a version of a, a genetic hybrid uh, with a particular genetic structure. Um, and from the very start, um, it's clear when you look at the story and the information that she was pulled in and identified for this from a very, very early age. She was actually um, brought up on the Sandringham estate um, and uh, knew the Queen and Prince Charles and stuff from a very early age. Um, the Windsors are, this is the Queen here, a, um, an ancient reptile human bloodline. And I was kind of surprised, um, although my research was going that way, uh, to be told that uh, by a confidant of Diana that her nickname for the Windsors was the lizards or the reptiles and she used to say in all seriousness they're not human and she knew far more about this background by the time she died than um, people in the public domain would ever realize um, and uh, she'd certainly realized what the Windsors were about and um, where they came from now this is a uh, a guy who has been going around saying that Diana and his son Dodie were assassinated. I haven't got time to go into why um, someone might feel it acceptable for their son to die in a, in a, in a road crash, um, but if you read The Biggest Secret, you can see some of the background to this. If we start judging whether something is possible by what we would do, we're going to lose the plot, because not everyone thinks like everyone else. And when you look at the background to Diana's assassination, the person that had complete control of her security and her movements in the crucial period, uh, days uh, leading up to it, but particularly on that specific day, was Mohammed Al-Fayed. And when you look at his background, um, uh, as I've said in The Biggest Secret, uh, you know when um, Mohammed Al-Fayed is trying to uh, kid you, trying to uh, tell you something that's not true because his lips are moving. It's the way you can see it because this guy has lied his way through his whole uh, economic and business career. And he's done exactly that over Diana's assassination. There was um, a guy um, uh, that I've mentioned a number of times in my books called Tony Blair. Tony Blair um, was brought through by this brotherhood to become Prime Minister of Britain. And I have um, a contact uh, who, uh, for a long time, performed satanic ceremonies in which ritual human sacrifice took place of children and of adults. And one of the key places, which I've talked about in my books, is a place known as the Castle of Darkness in Belgium. In the late 80s, she says that at a ritual sacrifice that she um, performed was the Queen of England, which she's done sacrifices for many times, um, the Queen Mother, Tony Blair, who was then just a lower-ranked politician, and Mohammed Al-Fayed, father of Dodi. And yet in the public arena, we get this uh, royal family on one side and Dodi Fayed's father, Mohammed Al-Fayed, on the other, when in fact they lock into the same controlling force. And he had control of her uh, movements on the crucial day. Uh, there's uh, the Isis uh, symbol of ancient Egypt 
um, very close to that um, headgear that he uh, posed with uh, for a, a British newspaper. Now again, if you're going to kind of follow the symbolism and the background to Diana's assassination, you have to go back into the ancient world. You can pick one of these uh, reptile, um, one of the pure key reptile human bloodlines up in Troy, ancient Troy, which is what we now call Turkey. You can follow this bloodline through the Caucasus Mountains and into Europe and into what we call France. In fact, France is named after these people. They call themselves the Sicambrian Franks. And they had a royal offshoot and eventually became known by this royal offshoot called the Merovingians. And the Merovingians set up the city we call Paris. Um, you're looking at a part of the modern Paris, which is the, was the, the place that they established the original Paris. And they named the city after one of the um, people involved in the Trojan Wars, a guy called Prince Paris. Um, and there's Notre Dame, Our Lady, Diana, Semiramis, Isis Cathedral. And this was where Paris kind of came out of with the Merovingians uh, many, many centuries ago. Now, these Merovingians, um, Franks, the Cambrian Franks, worshipped the goddess Diana, who was one of the great goddesses of the ancient world. And they built underground chambers um, just outside the original Paris to do their sacrifices and ceremonies to the goddess Diana. Of course, as Paris has got bigger and bigger, the area of that sacrifice area for the goddess Diana is now modern Paris. And it's still an underground chamber. That point is called the Pont d'Alma Tunnel where Diana died um, in 1997. Um, and Diana is actually blood related to the Merovingian line. This is the Ritz Hotel owned by Mohammed Al-Fayed and all around the square, it's called the Vendome, um, you see at first floor level um, depictions in gold of that symbol I talked about um, a long time ago, the circle, the cross, and the sun on the, the center. And it comes uh, from one of the French kings, one of the Louis, who was known as the Sun King, who built the, the Palace of Versailles. And in the back of the Palace of Versailles, in the grounds, is a depiction of the goddess Diana, which this aristocratic uh, bloodline network very much focus on as one of their deities. Someone said, this is the Kennedy assassination here, something very true. When you try to understand um, who was behind an assassination, look at who had the power to remove the security at the crucial time. Because he said, um, assassinations don't just happen, they are allowed to happen. And when you look at the uh, footage taken on a camera, a video camera by a member of the public when Rabin the Israeli Prime Minister was um, assassinated. It's extraordinary. You have the line of soldiers um, lined up to protect Rabin as he came to his car, and in among them is the guy who killed him. As Rabin appears um, on this video, extraordinary sight, the soldiers just walk backwards, leaving the assassin on his own. Rabin walks past him, thank you very much, good night. And it's the same with the Kennedy assassination and so many others. Um, this is the point where Kennedy was hit. This is Kennedy's car at the front. There's nobody on it. Um, and yet you look at the car behind, uh, which doesn't carry the President of the United States, there's four security guards and two outriders. If they'd have been there, of course, Kennedy could not have been killed um, by a bullet from outside because he was so well protected. But the whole thing was removed, the security, to allow it to happen. And it was the same in Paris on that night. This is the back entrance to the Ritz Hotel where the car left because um, it was decided by Mohammed Al-Fayed on the phone to his son Dodi from England that although she'd had a certain level of security all day, a Mercedes and a, a, a backup car, a Range Rover, that was suddenly at the crucial time going to be removed and another Mercedes was brought in with no backup car and no security. Um, apart from the uh, Trevor Reese Jones, the bodyguard in the front seat. So suddenly, classic assassination, security is removed to allow it to happen. In the car uh, that was driven away was this guy, Henri Paul, who's been the fall guy uh, for it, or blamed on him. 
He is an asset, or was an asset, of British and French intelligence. Had been for a long time. And he had uh, four bank accounts, which uh, had considerable amounts of money paid in in the period leading up to that. Uh, not necessarily for what happened to Diana, but because he was an asset of British and French intelligence, which is the same organization. And to, to really um, appreciate how this could be done, need to appreciate something called trauma-based mind control. During the last war in the concentration camps of Germany, in fact, way, way back this has been known about, but particularly during the last war, they started to perfect um, the manipulation of a natural mechanism in the mind that shuts out trauma. What they did um, was to understand that if you could systematically traumatize someone, their mind would shut out the memory of it and create an amnesic barrier, which would be um, disconnected from the rest of the mind. This is what happens when people have a major road accident and they can't remember what happened. It's because the amnesic barrier has been created to shut out trauma so we don't keep reliving the horror. Good thing. But they realized that if you could do that systematically and start with children, particularly um, before the age of five and six, you could turn their minds into a honeycomb of self-contained compartments, none of which was aware of the other's existence. This guy was what they call a multiple, Henri Paul, uh, which uh, in their mind is broken up into different compartments and so through trigger words and what have you and trigger sentences, hypnotic keys, one amnesic barrier becomes the conscious level. That experiences something or is programmed to do something and then he's pushed back and another one's pulled forward. It's actually got to the point where, amazing as it may seem, you can be drunk in one compartment and completely sober in the other. Which is interesting in, in relation to what happened if you look at the story of Henri Paul. Once the programming is in there, and in the biggest secret, I, I, I put incredible documentation and background um, to this and, and um, what, what happened and trauma-based mind control and how it creates assassins and people going crazy with guns to justify taking guns out of circulation, all this stuff. Um, when you um, look at the background, all that is necessary is to program the guy, push that programming back into the mind, and that will stay there at the subconscious level until some trigger comes in. When that trigger word or trigger action or whatever is said or done, that programming is activated. Um, so you can be in normal mode and be very normal and no problem and nothing, oh, I've never, never noticed anything different about old Henry that night. Trigger word, bang, programming, you're like a robot. And what gives away um, this is the fact that the car hit the 13th pillar. Um, if you read The Biggest Secret, you'll see the incredible obsession with symbolism that this brotherhood has. Um, and there, I've been to Paris, and in that tunnel, the Pont d'Alma tunnel, there's 30 odd of these pillars. It hit the 13th. The 13 is the number that reoccurs again and again and again and again, constantly over thousands and thousands of years in all these different brotherhood groups and all these different secret societies. And it relates in part to the 1 and 12, that symbol again of the sun and the, the 12 um, months, the 12 um, areas of the zodiac. So, all it would have needed, because the guy was missing for three hours that night, was the trigger word or the trigger to activate the programming. And Henri Paul suddenly goes into whatever he was programmed to do. Now, where they were going that night, and this is agreed by everyone, is from the Ritz Hotel, which is numbered one on this map, down to the Champs-Élysées and to almost the Arc de Triomphe, where Dodi Fired had his flat. When they went earlier in the day, the car went down to the Place de la Concorde, went up the Champs-Élysées to his flat, which is right next to that circle you see there. This is the quickest way from the Ritz to the, to the apartment of Dodi Fired. But not that occasion did he go that way. Henri Paul went around to the Place de la Concorde and suddenly, instead of going down the quickest way, went on to this uh, dual carriageway, goes alongside the River Seine. He went 
um, at an increasingly fast speed and then went down into the Pont Dalma tunnel. Now, why would he go that way? Some people say, well, he was going round to miss the traffic or whatever. But the key thing is, by going the long way to the apartment, it took him through the Pont Dalma tunnel. It took him through this ancient sacrificial site to the goddess Diana. And what does Pont Dalma mean? Pont Dalma means passage or bridge of the moon goddess. And Diana, in Brotherhood symbolism, is a symbol of the moon, a moon goddess. Um, another interesting thing is that bodyguards, when they're in the front seat of a car, they never wear a seatbelt because they're looking after their uh, clients and they need to react quickly. What happened with um, Trevor Reese Jones, the bodyguard, is that he never had a seatbelt on when the car left the Ritz, which is normal practice. When he got to the Place de la Concorde, um, one of the photographers um, chasing the car got a shot of... Um, the bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, still no seatbelt. Literally a minute later, probably less, when the car crashed in the tunnel, Trevor Reese Jones had a seatbelt on. The only person in the car who did because the people in the back dirty fired and Diana did not. So either Trevor Reese Jones knew what was coming but didn't tell his clients, or he realized um, at some point there was a danger going on here and didn't tell his clients. This is the uh, Place de la Concorde, and there is the obelisk, the 3,200-year-old Luxor obelisk, um, which was um, uh, about a minute's drive uh, that night from the crash, and Diana went round there on the way to the, uh, to the scene. This is Trevor Reese Jones. Uh, when asked why he put his seatbelt on, he says he doesn't remember, um, and maybe we'll never know, but it's got to be one or the other. When the car came down to the tunnel um, here at the Pont d'Alma, it's a series of crossroads. Um, and that's very, very significant because these deities are, who are symbolic of the moon and various energies. They're broken up into different polarities. You've got Diana, which is the positive moon energy. And then you've got the negative force, uh, which is called Ikati, which is the goddess of the crossroads. And she's symbolized by crossroads and, and um, uh, all over the world. The Hecate satanic um, symbolism can be seen in the ceremonies and, and, and what have you. And so here we have a situation now where Diana, goddess of the moon, is taken into an ancient sacrificial site to the goddess Diana, dies in a tunnel which is called bridge or passage of the moon goddess and is also covered with crossroads to the goddess Hecate which is the malevolent um, symbol of the moon energy. This is the Pont Dalma tunnel. Um, it's very short and I've been through it and they keep telling me in the media it's very dangerous. I didn't really see that myself. And it's very close to the Arc de Triomphe which is um, a, another um, obelisk symbol. This is the 13th pillar and there's no way that car hit the 13th pillar given the obsession with symbolism of this brotherhood unless it was meant to happen. Um, I've talked to people who um, are experts in this mind control, who work to deprogram people who have been mind controlled in this way. And I said to them, is it possible to mind control a driver on a subconscious level to go into that tunnel and just um, whack the 13th pillar? Because, of course, in the conscious level, you'd say, come on, it's not possible. And everyone has said, absolutely, for this reason. The conscious level has a certain feeling of time. So going into the tunnel at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour and then hitting the 13th pillar, you, you must be joking. But the subconscious level has a completely different um, perception of time. 60, 70 miles an hour to that is walking pace. Therefore, the programming goes in at the subconscious level, making that hit the 13th pillar at speed. Piece of cake, according to these experts I've spoken to. Um, Diana actually survived the crash, uh, all reports say that, um, but instead of being taken to hospital where she could have got treatment that could have saved her life, she was held in that tunnel for a very, very long time. Medical experts outside of France have said it's ridiculous how long it, it took, about 95 minutes from the crash to get her to hospital, by which time she was clinically dead. Um, between the Ritz 
and the tunnel are 17 of these things, traffic cameras, which are filming the road which the car passed down. Had they been on that night, we wouldn't be standing here saying, well, I wonder what happened, could have been this, could have been that, we'd have seen it. All 17 were switched off in the period it took the car to get from the Ritz to the tunnel. Not only that, um, people who were um, tuning in that night in Paris to the police frequencies, as some people do, uh, have reported that the police frequencies um, in central Paris were also switched off in the period it took the car to get to the, the tunnel. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. This is the shot that that particular camera would have had. Uh, the Mercedes came in on this side of the road, and had that camera been on, everyone would have known by now what happened. They could have seen it, but it was switched off, or at least we're told it was. And so we have a situation in which um, Diana was held in that place for all that time, and she was clinically dead by the time she left it. And the question has been, even from people who have said, yes, it was an accident, why did they do that? Because according to the strict and obsessional symbolic ritual of this brotherhood, she had to die in that underground chamber on the site of ancient Diana worship and sacrifice to Diana. There's no way she was going to be allowed to leave the tunnel until she was dead, and so they kept her there all that time when um, most doctors, um, as they, some have pointed out, would have had it a hospital as quick as possible and she'd still be alive today, almost certainly. So the, the Diana story is just full of endless symbolism, and I'm just skipping the surface here. The, the detail is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, this is the top of the Pont d'Alma tunnel, um, and as, as I mentioned earlier, there is the depiction of the flame held by the Statue of Liberties in Paris and in New York, standing on a black pentagram, the classic satanic symbol. And that is where they take the flowers and stuff uh, now. This area of Paris with the um, Eiffel Tower, uh, the River Seine, is an ancient, ancient um, sacred site to this brotherhood. And uh, it's absolutely no coincidence that this is where they brought Diana to die that night. Um, indeed, when you go through her life in general, you find that the symbolism of the goddess Diana comes up again and again. When she married Prince Charles, they married her in St. Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral is on an ancient site of goddess Diana worship. And when they brought her uh, coffin out of Paris, it wasn't with the Union Jack and the flag of the country, um, it was with the flag of the royal family, full of these old symbols of the sun going back to the ancient world. And um, as I've uh, pointed out many times, and with a lot of supporting evidence, the British royal family were definitely involved in her murder. Um, interestingly, when the crash happened, uh, this guy comes into focus. This is Diana's brother, Earl Spencer. And I, there's one or two questions I'd like to ask him, really, because um, the symbolism of the goddess Diana in the ancient world related again and again to the tree grove, which is the sacred place to the goddess Diana. That's where the, 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 they, they used to worship her, in the tree grove. Lakes and islands, those three things keep reoccurring again and again and again in the stories of the goddess Diana. Um, this is where they put her grave on an island, in the tree grove, in the middle of a lake on the Althorpe estate, the Spencer estate. And those decisions, at least on the surface, were made by Earl Spencer. He also said in a BBC television interview that um, after the crash, he had a dream in which um, he was told to put four black swans on the lake around the grave. And the next day, he said he called his... Um, estate manager and asked um, where do I get four black swans and his estate manager apparently replied according to the official story you've heard then you've heard what we've just been given four black swans okay well the pigs are filling the room again I don't really accept that what is the symbolism of four black swans first of all when you look into the mind control um, programs the swan is very symbolic to the mind control programs but there's another one um, just take Swan Lake Swan Lake, in which the white swan, symbolic of the positive, was killed by the black swan, symbolic of the negative. And here you had um, the positive Diana energy 
killed by this, this brotherhood and the four black swans on the lake are tremendous symbolism, occult symbolism of, of that uh, negative force overcoming the positive. And in the Althorpe estate now you have this uh, what you might call temple to Diana and on many of the aristocratic um, estates and stately homes of England that carry these uh, reptile human bloodlines um, you find either temples to the goddess Diana in the grounds or areas of the stately home um, handed over to the goddess uh, Diana. So this lady was um, a great example of the way that people are not just assassinated but are assassinated in a way that follows ancient ritual because ritual is very powerful. If you do things in a certain ritual way, it generates a much more powerful energy than if you just uh, killed someone in a straightforward way. But as I say, in The Biggest Secret, I go into this in enormous detail. and The symbolism is just stunning of this um, event.